What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Today, we're going to do something different, one of those special ones. And it, it and this show requires that attention because Brian, after seeing it, I don't know where I heard it from. I don't know who excuse me, told me about it. I don't know who told me about it. Oh, I was in my sister's house watching. They were just watching shows or whatever. And kids were around. <clears throat> started watching Blue Eyed Samurai. I said, oh, this ain't for them. <laughs> you know? No, it's not. <laughs> I thought it was some, you know. And then I said, oh, but I gotta, I'll, I'll watch it later because it looked interesting. <laughs> And Brian, after I watched it, man, I could not stop watching. I had to see what happened next. And they built that expectation with each episode in terms of um, her progress in her journey to do what she was set out to do. I couldn't tell enough people about it. Every time I spoke about Blue Eyes Samurai to people, I told them, listen, you got, you like, you got to watch this. You got to watch this. Um, and I was able to convince quite a few people to watch it and, and they reacted the same way the way I reacted. Brian, I, you were one of those people mm-hmm. that I preached this to. What are your thoughts on, uh, what did you think of, of Blue Eyed Samurai? Well, I think this is something that, you know, for our show, this is kind of a direction we're going in, which is we're trying to find additional content that is sort of offshoots, but tangentially related to the kind of core superhero comic book genre, right? So we kind of gave, we've done shows on One Piece. We've done shows on Godzilla Minus One. And um, here we are talking about Blue Eyed Samurai. And I think we'll continue to do that. I think I, there's there's other stuff coming that I think will be in that vein. I know, for example, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender going live action on Netflix might be something we're probably going to talk about when that hits next month. So this one is interesting from a couple of angles. Uh, I saw the trailer. It's funny. I saw the trailer in passing. and kind of like... It, got lost in the shuffle of other things that I had to watch. And then when you said, am I, you know, should I, that I should watch it? It kind of like moved it back up to the, to the queue. And I, I got done with it. Um, like fabulous show. So Michael Green and Amber Nazumi, we'll come back to Michael Green in a second, are the creators behind this husband and wife team. Um, Dope. and it looks beautiful. The animation is amazing in this show. Uh, it's one of those where I, again, I was immediately thinking about, okay, so we know DC is trying to do some animated work, um, with creature commandos and all that sort of stuff. And we know Marvel's got what if, and they're trying to do X-Men 97 and, and you know, <clears throat> I'm watching this and I'm like, just in terms of the fluidity and the style, I'm like, you know, hopefully they're looking around at what else is on the field and saying, you know, how do we, how do we reach the level of some of these types of shows where the scenery is great? The action is great. The costuming, even though it is animated costuming is great. So yeah, yeah the show, the show's amazing. Um, and the voice cast is insane. Like I didn't look at it. Me neither. I don't and even know I who the voice cast is. The voice would <clears throat> be like, wait, that's Randall Park. Like, wait, that's Kenneth Branagh. Like, wait, Oh, where? I'm like, and then even my Erskine, who's your lead, is about to become a lot bigger because she's in that Mrs. or Mrs. Smith um, live action TV show that Amazon is dropping with her and Donald Glover. That's coming mm-hmm. out in a couple of weeks. There's a lot of famous people in this show um, who are who are lending their voice to it. But look, as you say, it's not an overly complex story, but it's incredibly well executed. Uh, and the characters are interesting. Um, the flashbacks are not excessive. Like they're generally pretty useful to your understanding of, of key characters. Um, and then, yeah, like with one, with one little exception, I'll get into it because I have a nitpick, but um, the, the fight choreography is amazing. It's just like, I definitely found moments where I was like, any chance we can see live action on this? Because I was like, this is insane. So, Yo, Brian, there were some sequences that I was genuinely hyped. Like I was like, when if you saw the Matrix for the first time and you saw the moves, or if you saw one of Brian and, and my favorite movies, um, Equilibrium. Equilibrium. 
with the kung fu guns that yeah. first time when he got surrounded and he had to take care of them those there were multiple moments in this uh in this show where you're like wow and that i was i was just so impressed at, at, at their uh delivery of uh escalation in terms of, of action and their storytelling yeah i mean when it comes to the 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 fights, I mean, the angles, um, the choices in terms of weapons, in terms of, in terms of opponents. And you see, like, look, this thing draws from pop culture in a very smart way, right? Like, there's a very Rambo sequence in one of these houses where she's taking out these kind of assassins one by one. And I'm, I, all I'm seeing is Sylvester Stallone in like Rambo 2 and 3. Like, he's in the mud and his eyes are open. Like, this is their answer to that. But it's done so well that you're like, I appreciate the homage. I mean, even yeah. the whole premise of sort of this, like, they're smuggling guns in, spoiler alert, to sort of dispatch the Shogun. I mean, that's Last Samurai. I mean, Tom Cruise's yeah, Last yeah, Samurai, yeah, that was the yeah. whole real thrust of that fight, right? So they borrow from that. Um, they borrow from John Wick. They borrow from sort of the Clint Eastwood, you know, man with no name style um, uh, Western. Like, you see it, but it's done so seamlessly well that you're just and like, they borrow from a bunch, of kung, a bunch of kung fu movies. Kung fu, exactly. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And they, and they even like stylistically, there's definitely a nod to like Kill Bill when she's in yes. the fight in the snow and they kind of yes. pan out and like it's like these are smart ways to bring in things you've seen uh, and make you feel comfortable while giving you something new at the same time. But yeah, the protagonist is really interesting. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like Mizu's an interesting character. The choice around the blue eyes, that what that signifies, the choice to make her female but then make it kind of unclear to some of the other characters that she's female i think is brilliant like that's actually brilliantly played and what's crazy is that um i don't want to that too much into the story because i want people to react the same way is people not knowing that she's female yet experiencing some tension between those two characters one character not knowing that he's a she yeah but he's feeling something yeah <laughs> which is yeah. weird yeah. you know which was funny <laughs> like this is weird but it was the way they did that it was just funny to me it was it was yeah. funny and it was well done yeah and then like i said the the, the variety of action that you get um, very true to sort of, as you say, Kung Fu kind of heritage, samurai heritage, like it, it's great. Um, I think if I had one small nitpick, and I don't know if you, how you felt about it. I felt like some of the action sequences leading up to her pursuit of Fowler were so good that it almost left nowhere for that fight to go. And I did feel like the fight final because obviously this is going on <coughs> yes. the final showdown with fowler was not quite at that same level because we had expended so many great things with her fighting impossible odds along the way yeah yeah it was a bit of a letdown but i understand that because of how they continued it i understand there wasn't the certainly the antagonist was a character who was very uh, formidable. Yes. And so the anticipation of seeing those two go at it, it really didn't go down that way. But I under but I it gives us hope that at some point it is revisited and we get a more. Uh, not as satisfying uh, 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 encounter. Yeah, I mean, this what this <clears throat> did have that like video game flavor of like she's hunting the one person and that's your boss for this level, and she's hunting yeah, the next person and that's yeah. the boss for that level, right? And then you get to the seemingly big boss, but then you find out it's actually part of a broader a broader quest and a broader narrative, and on we go to season two, but uh, which I which I will be incredibly excited to see. So, um, no, I think congratulations all around. I think it. it uh, it, you know, it also it asked, it's, it it got me asking a few questions. So I guess I'll put start putting them out here. Which is why why is it seemingly so hard for Hollywood to do 
a samurai story like this in live action successfully. Like when I see it done this well in this form, and then I think about like in the last, you know, 20, 30 years, there haven't really been that many attempts, let alone successes in this area. Like I just talked about Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. Like that's a solid movie, but like it's mm -hmm. very much like a... I like that I, movie. I like it, yeah. but it's like, because, well, Ken Watanabe is amazing in that movie, yes, but it's yes. like the premise of the movie is still kind of like white savior of native population movie, yeah, yeah. which is eh, not really necessary. But, and, then, and, then, and then what's this dude? Matt Damon has the audacity to come out of, with a movie right after that. I want like, two years or three years Great after Wall, that. Great Wall, right? Great yeah. Wall, which is, which is not that successful. We, we've talked about the trials and tribulations of Carl Rinch and his 47 Ronin attempt. <laughs> Right, so that's what I mean. Like, but when I see we'll, this, we'll see another attempt in the next few weeks with Shogun, Shogun. The remake of Shogun. Now, I I agree. <clears throat> that's what got me thinking because I saw this show and I was like, a lot of this I think would have translated in the right hands into live action. Now, I'm very glad it exists as animated, but it, it just got me asking the question of like, why it doesn't see? They made it look so easy and effortless that I was like, why why is it so hard to make a compelling Samurai epic or revenge tale uh, in live action uh, when when this is done so well. I don't know, Brian. The only thing I can think of is there are perhaps there are perhaps uh, visionaries who have a vision of doing something that's dope. And then, you know, Hollywood execs come in and say, oh, it has to do this, it has to do that. And then it messes up that, that. Yeah, like the 47 Ronin was a great example where it's like that, that story is one of the classic sort of Japanese samurai stories. You can find old black and white versions of that movie. It's an incredible idea and concept. And there's an old movies that look amazing. And it's like, Hollywood Hollywooded it up because they put in the supernatural and they put in like sorcery and they put in they had to put Keanu in there again as like we got to have a westerner and it's like you didn't need it like you, when you see this show it's just a reminder it's like you don't need it like yeah there's a, I know there's a Caucasian and Fowler in this show but he you know like the show is driven by Mizu like that's the driving force and like it's driven by the Asian characters and it, it just I don't know it, it made me sort of more frustrated that we don't have more of these. Um, and even like when we talk about like with the, the quest to make a great Wolverine movie, which most people would say Logan got there, but like we never saw a prime Wolverine that was at this level, but this is that kind of story, right? Like the, like his, his ties to the far East and his sort of, you know, quest for like this, there's a DNA of that in this show where I'm like, why couldn't we have applied that in some way to Hugh Jackman, you know, 15 years ago when he was still sort of prime Wolverine. I think they even did a good job in the X-Men cartoons with him going over. And I think he had to fight Silver, not Silver Sable. Uh, uh, it's Silver, Silver Samurai, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There was a few episodes where he was in Japan and they, and they made that dope too, man. Yeah. But <clears throat> we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know what you, is there anything else, Brian, you want to add to I this? See, well, one is what's your star rating? Because this oh. is, a, yeah. I would have to say... Five man. All right, goes to the five. Goes to the five. Because because I understand yeah. the reasoning behind the, the the fight at the end. Okay, so that was my four and a half. Was simply that I I just it was a little that episode to me is a, the weakest of the of the eight. Um, but I understand that it bridges to somewhere else. So maybe I'll revise that. But otherwise, it's a it's pretty much a flawless flawless show. Here's my other point. My last question. So Michael Green is a name that has been in our has come into our lives again recently. He is the latest writer on Blade. The guy who wrote and created this. Very interesting. That's Does it exciting. Give you hope because there's some applicability from the way this show is constructed to what I would argue would make for a very successful Blade movie. When did he sign on? Uh, he's the one who signed on to save Mahershala walking out. So he's the current writer. He hasn't written it yet. We don't know what he's doing. But this is the guy they brought in. This is the guy who did Blade Runner 2049. And he's done some successful stuff. But this show was the one, when I saw his name, I double-checked to make sure it's the same Michael Green. It is. He is writing Blade right now. 
Mahershala Ali, I know, was listening to us, and then Michael Green stepped in and <laughs> saved them. I know Mahershala Ali saw our episode. He was like, "Yeah, I, I, he, they, they right, they right," and 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 they brought in somebody that convinced them otherwise. That they were, gonna, yo, if I'm gonna do something dope, let it be dope, not some wish wash, and I just to fulfill my dreams of being blatant. No, 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 no. no. I want to be memorable because the only guy you can even think of right now is Wesley Snipes. Yeah. But I, and I'm not saying they should shoplift the story, but I'm saying I was thinking about the action in particular. I was like, you can transpose the concept of like if you swap Mizu for Blade and you swap some of the like the Rambo esque sequence, like some of the fight scenes, and you say, if you can bring them to that level in live action with Blade, you might have some. If Mahershala can do it, that's the other question. Like physically, because Wesley Snipes could do it all physically. Yeah, that is the. I mean, he has to be Keanu Reeves, dedicated, right? He has to be dedicated to to be able to show off those moves and not let us, not give us a Beverly Hills Cop, um, <laughs> the yeah. dude that threw the the the, the guy <laughs> over the table, and he's like, "Hey, ain't that Richard Pryor?" He, he, he looked like Richard Pryor. You go back, <laughs> he looked like Richard Pryor, but it ain't Richard Pryor. Somebody else. But you can tell that it wasn't him. Yeah. So I don't want to see that. I want to see you do it. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Um, that last one is exciting. Michael Green uh, to, here to save the day. Let's see, Brian. This is going to be a very interesting story to, to follow and, and see where it ends up. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And uh, uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on!